All right. Welcome, everyone. We are here for Way to Riches. Way to Riches. Prior to us starting today, prior to hitting the record button, there was a question that was asked and Roddy had asked Kayla the question. You're going to hear from Kayla a little bit later. You're going to hear from Vladdy as well. And Roddy had asked Kayla that when she heard that we were doing an event called Way to Riches, what did you feel or what were you thinking? And her answer was excitement. And I loved how she answered. In fact, as she was answering the question, I had complete goosebumps. And I had goosebumps because what she said is that we are here to serve you. We're all here to serve you. Roddy is here to serve you. Vladdy's here to serve you. Kayla's here to serve you. We've got a special uh, person on as well. Paula's here to serve you. We're all here to serve you. And what Kayla had said was, thank you. Thank you for allowing us because what you have is something very precious and that is time. And we honor you and respect you for your time. Now, what I would love for you, and I know my entire team would love for you, is that you get the most out of this time together. But let me ask you a question before I dive into my PowerPoint presentation. What is it that you're hoping to get out of today? What would you love to get? Is it a deeper understanding? Is it more specific, like a step to take you in the direction of riches? Would you love to have more money in your life? Type in the chat box, what is the reason, your primary reason why you joined us today for this particular event called Way to Riches? It could be one of the things that I've already mentioned. It could be something else. So learn something new, says Tina. All right, great. Regina, actionable steps to reach my goals sooner. I love that. Okay, impact elite Hispanics global. Oh, that sounds beautiful, Marco. Breakthrough, says Pete. Okay, you know, when you're ready for a breakthrough, you will experience a breakthrough. Practical steps, says Maria. Munsa, how to be free. I love that. Helen, the discover the way to riches. Hanan, making money using my skills. Beautiful. Joan, to learn more about how this can happen. Tammy, to become more focused and pick up something I haven't in the past. I love that. You know, I want to stop for a moment and speak about what Tammy just wrote in the chat box there. Tammy said to become more focused and pick up something I haven't in the past. Tammy's a very serious student. I've seen Tammy on many programs, and I love that about her. And, you know, Tammy and I share something in common. I'm very much like that, Tammy. I attend things, watch webinars, do things because I want to increase the focus and perhaps pick up something. It could be something you've already learned before. So you may find that as well. For those of you that have been in my events before or are in my programs right now, you will definitely get something more today. And the reason is because I'm more today than I was yesterday or the day before because I focus on expanding my depth of understanding by applying what I'm learning. And every time we approach one of these events, and as you know, we do these events fairly frequently, I always start with a fresh slate. I actually open up a PowerPoint and I start new. I don't go and get something from the past and bring it all in. You may see some slides that look similar or familiar or whatever, but you are likely not necessarily going to see something new, but you may see something explained in a better way. Why do we do that? Because we want to help you. We want to help you experience more of what it is that you would desire to have in your life. So building the faith and the knowing. I love that, Connie. Connie is one of those serious students. In fact, Connie is in... Every program that we have, I've been blessed to serve Connie for years. I just love how committed she is to success. Uh, Eileen says, today I knew that this program was the one that was going to get me where I wanted to go. Absolutely, I can help you get to where you want to go. We'll talk a little bit more about that even beyond this two hours that we're going to invest together. Maddie wants to get her book published. Okay. Cheryl says, would love to learn steps how to get riches. Beautiful. DR to know how. Okay. Now that's interesting. How to get rich. Is that what you're talking about? Because we're definitely going to cover that off. Barbara, I'm absolutely determined to live my fullest, most fulfilled life. Now, do you feel the energy of that? I'm absolutely determined. Yes, I love that. Absolute determination is where you want to be in order to experience the quantum shift in your life. Tootie, another serious student, reinforced my understanding to keep consistent with manifesting more money. Absolutely. How many of you would love to do just that, manifest more money? Is that something that you would love? Money? Riches? Is that something you would love? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Does anyone have a discomfort with the idea of having more money? 
is anyone honestly just be honest about the answer to that question no okay good Connie good good okay good I mean if you do there's a paradigm there and we can definitely address it thank you Ruth I appreciate your honesty okay more money more awareness about my gifts okay would love that no okay not anymore okay says Vladdy I love that I just don't want to make it an idol okay well you can love money there's nothing wrong with that friend there could be you know depending on what your financial situation is but there could be a paradigm there it's not that you're worshiping money, but money is a really good thing. It's a very positive thing. And I know a lot of people, and it's evident by the way that most of the world lives, have negative beliefs around that. Oh, there we go. Tootie says, I love money. Money loves me. Okay. I know I haven't uh, referenced everybody's comment. I'm going to shut the chat box off for a little bit. I'll turn it on again a little later, but I'm going to head over to share with you my screen so that we can dive right into this presentation way too riches. And also what I want to encourage you to do is while we're doing this presentation, while we're investing this time together, make sure that you take notes. It's going to be far more valuable for you to take notes, but what's going to be even more valuable is for you to follow through, like follow through with some of the ideas that I'm going to present for you today. And we'll also talk about how we can help you even further beyond this time that we're investing here together. But right out of the gate, like right at the start of this webinar, I want you to understand something. This is something about you. And that is your paradigms, which is the current belief system that you have firmly impressed in your subconscious mind, will be attempting to influence you during this webinar. Why do I say that? Because your paradigms influence you all day long, whether you're aware of it or not. So even when you may hear of a great idea or you may be introduced to something that could absolutely change your life and change your results, the paradigms are going to be there. And depending on what they are, and for most people, they are negative and destructive or debilitating, they will attempt to hold you back. But if you just decide, you know what, I'm going to have an open mind and I'm going to be open to receive the valuable information that's today and consider what these options are for me. And the reason is because you're a very powerful being and you have the ability to manifest anything that your heart desires, anything. In fact, as you hear those words that you have the ability to manifest anything that you desire, you may be thinking not possible. That's, you know, maybe for other people, but not for me. But the truth is you absolutely can. The fact that you're here says a lot about who you are. And it doesn't say that you're not doing well already. It means that you can have more. We've got to really understand ourselves, really understand our belief system, but also understand how to create a new belief system that's going to support the outcomes that you desire. So let's just push aside the limiting beliefs for this period of time. I want you to suspend disbelief. I absolutely know what I'm talking about. I've been studying this for close to half a century but more importantly, I've been implementing and I know it works. I've seen the ma magic and experienced the magic. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you in control of your results or are your paradigms in control? You see, your paradigms are controlling your thoughts and your feelings. And what a lot of people don't realize is that you're so strongly, you're stro so strongly programmed and conditioned that People are robotic and they tend to do the same things, think the same things unless and until they break their old patterns and discipline themselves to create a new way of being. And that new way of being can have you on the way to riches. It can have you experiencing earning more money than you've only ever dreamed of, but it's absolutely possible. So when you think about this question, you know, are you in control or are your paradigms in control? What that really is speaking to is that the paradigms are always in control. But are the paradigms that are in control of your life, the way you're thinking, the way you're speaking, the way you're feeling, etc., are they supportive of creating the lifestyle that you desire? Whether that's a, an abundant lifestyle, a prosperous lifestyle, a success lifestyle, or whatever it is. So I can help you understand how to break those old patterns so that you can create and condition yourself to be a certain way, to be a certain way, a specific way where it's almost like autopilot. Because the great news is 
once you program yourself and continue to focus on improvement, you're going to find that your results will get better and better and better and better. And they absolutely do. And they do for everyone. So if you want to change your life or any part of it, and we're talking about results here, you must take conscious control. Now, what are you taking conscious control over? You're taking conscious control over what you're giving energy to. Now, what does that mean? It means what are you thinking? And what are you feeling? So if you wake up in the morning and you find that every day you wake up and you start to think about what you don't have, or you start to think about the struggle that you're involved in, or you start to think about the debt load that you have, or you start to think about what you want and realize that you don't have the way or the means to get there, that's giving conscious control over those thoughts. And what are you going to create? You're going to create in harmony with what you're consistently and repeatedly thinking and feeling. So taking conscious control sounds like a very simple thing to do, but there is effort involved. There is a tremendous amount of work involved. And I'll talk about how I took conscious control in my own life and what actually went on when the choice was made to take conscious control in my life. Now, I really want you to be honest here. Now, this is not a negative thing or it doesn't mean less than kind of thing, but are you at a point in your life where you are dissatisfied with your results? Now, right now, the chat box is available for you to type in there, but the only ones that are going to see it are the hosts and co-hosts. So nobody else is going to see your answer. So type in the chat box. Are you at a point in your life where you are dissatisfied with your results? Now, understand that's not a criticism. And it's not necessarily a negative thing. And the reason is because if you haven't made a conscious choice to make some changes in your life, it's because you're not aware that there are undesirable results going on in your life right now. I would say that there are certain things in my life that I absolutely have focus on and intend to create even better results. So let me go to the chat box and I want to see what some of you have written as it relates to that. Okay. Yes. A lot of yes answers, a lot of honest yes answers. I appreciate that. Thank you for putting that in. Um, I'm not dissatisfied, but I have bigger goals right now. Okay. That's terrific. Dissatisfied in some areas, but are getting better and better. Perfect. It doesn't mean that you're dissatisfied in all areas as well. Or as I see here is that somebody is ready to break through and that's great. If you're ready to break through, then you're definitely in the right place. And that question does not mean that there's something wrong with what's going on in your life. I know some people are sensitive to this kind of question because they, if you're already insecure, if you don't have confidence and you hear a question like this, you may interpret it because of your belief system. This is not a negative thing. It's an observation. You may interpret it to be a negative thing. Like some in some way you're less than. That's not true. Absolutely not true. If you have dissatisfaction in your life, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. In fact, it can be a growth thing. It may be the thing that inspires you to create better results, absolutely better results. And that's what I'm here for is to help you create better and better results and stop settling as one person has written here, stop settling for that. It does not have to be your way of being. This does not have to be that you're waking up every day and just feeling dissatisfied and you're dissatisfied all day long and you go to bed dissatisfied. It could be that there's something. It could be the financial situation in your life. It could be a relationship. It could be health. It could be the home you're living in or the way that you're living that you're not happy with. Well, allow that to inspire you to go for something more to go for what you would really love to experience because you absolutely have the ability to do it. And when you have the longing for more, and I love this image, when you have that longing for more, it's possible for you to have more. The fact that you thought about having more means that you have the ability to have more. The fact that you feel that desire for better results means that you're human because it's a very natural experience for every living, breathing human person to feel that desire for more. This is what is going on. I love that one person wrote, I have allowed my current situation to dictate my results. So I love the honesty in that. Most people are doing that. Most people are allowing their current situation to dictate their results. And I'm going to help you get away from that. Stop doing that. 
because that only keeps you stuck. It keeps you creating and producing results that you do not love. And so it's a cycle or a circle that you get involved in. And we're going to, we're going to help you break out of that. Now, here's a question I'd like you all to answer. Honestly, again, the chat box is for my use only and my team. How many of you believe that if you just had more money, that your problems would be solved? How many of you believe that? This could be a yes or a no answer. I'm just curious to see what your answers are with regard to this. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of no's, not at all. Oh, somebody says yes. A couple of people say yes. Okay, fascinating. Okay, thank you. I appreciate somebody wrote down um, that they don't have inner peace and worry and concern is consuming. Well, we can stop that for sure. That is something that we can address. By the way, I will take questions a little bit later on. Our process over this two hours is to load you with huge, valuable understandings, ideas, inspiration that can help you. We're also going to have Kayla come on a little while and she's going to talk about how we can work with you a little bit more. I am going to cover off the secret to success, the secret to the way to riches as well in this time that we're here together. And we'll take some questions a little bit later as well. So, it, so for those of you that believe that money can help solve your problems, I want you to know that to some degree they can. Absolutely, to some degree they can. But can they solve permanent problems in some ways that they can absolutely do that? But here's what I want to say about this. Like money, if you believe that the money is going to solve the problem, and it may for a very short period of time, think about people that win lotteries and all of a sudden in their life, they have a large amount of money that they never had before. But what ultimately happens if they do not change their consciousness, if they do not change their belief about their relationship and their experience with money, they end up going through all the money. And this is what happens for the majority of lottery winners is that they blow through the money and they find themselves right back where they were before struggling why because they did not change their consciousness they didn't change their belief system and as a result they remain bound right it's like that quote people are anxious to change their environment but they're not willing to do anything about it they therefore remain bound well the truth is nobody remains bound because nothing stays the same but it may look like they're bound. They're just recreating more of the same and more of the same. It's like people who get into a cycle of debt, you know, debt accumulation. They may get credit cards. And I, I did this. This is something that I did many, many years ago. They get credit cards. They run them up. They go get another credit card. They run that up. Then they go to the bank. They get a consolidation loan. They pay off the credit cards. They get more credit cards, run it up. Then they did you hear about the cycle. Like this is what goes on with a number of people. So they just keep recreating more of the same. And if you don't want to recreate more of the same of the results that you have in your life, then you must discipline yourself. First, you got to commit, but you have to discipline yourself to create a new belief system. How do you do that? By what you allow to come into your mind. And that's accomplished through study, study, understanding and application. Because the truth is, it doesn't matter how many seminars you get on or how many books you read or how many programs you register for. If you're not applying what you're learning, nothing is going to change. You have to apply. You have to be somebody who is willing to take action. So in January 1979, I was blessed to go to a seminar. You can see my high school yearbook photo, a pretty miserable person. And I think this was very reflective of who I was. And I went to see the incredible Bob Proctor, and it was a mandated program that as an employee of the company that I worked for at the time, we were told we had to go to the seminar. I did not want to go, found myself in the front row, and my life was messed up. And as far as I was concerned, it wasn't my fault. It was somebody else's fault. But why did I choose to listen to Bob Proctor? Why do you think, I'm going to ask you this question, why do you think I chose to listen to Bob Proctor that evening in January 1979, when I was a miserable person, I didn't go there on my own accord. It wasn't like a seminar that I had chosen to sign up for. I was told by my employer that every single employee had to be at this event. But why did I choose to listen? 
Tootie says something inside, he said, made my heart feel hopeful. Yeah, inner knowing. That's right. It woke me up. You're darn right about that. The desire for more. Definitely. Resonance says, right. Yes. Something, suddenly something resonated with me. Yes. It was destined, Tanya. I like that. Hey, good to see you back, Tanya. I haven't seen you for a while. He was the type of person you wanted to be. Hmm. I don't think he was the type of person that I wanted to be. And he never was the type of person I wanted to be. I wanted to have the depth of understanding that I had. And that's probably what you meant there. He definitely began to change my consciousness. That's what Reed said, because your soul knew you were ready for more, says Joanna. Yes, absolutely. My soul knew I was ready for more. There was something. Yeah, he did inspire me, billionaire Pete. You're absolutely right. And so what happened was, when Bob Proctor began to speak, and if any of you were blessed enough to be in his presence and, and see him on stage or be with him in a seminar room, the energy was off the charts. I mean, absolutely off the charts. He was, in my opinion, the greatest speaker in this field that's ever blessed this planet, ever. And he was really good. But kind of like what Kayla had said earlier, and Kayla, who's a member of our team, also a member of my family, she said, today is all about you. And when she said that, I had goosebumps because I love that she said that because she gets it, right? Today is all about you. And what that means for us at Dynamic Destinies is we're here to serve. Like we show up to serve. That's why we're here. I don't have to work anymore in my life, but I choose to. Why? Because I'm so madly in love with these materials because they've changed every aspect of my life for the better, every aspect of my life. So Bob was all about that. Bob Proctor was somebody that was here for whoever was showing up, whoever was in the audience, whoever had that hunger for more, whoever had something of, I don't know, discomfort in their life, but they didn't want it anymore. They were dissatisfied with their life and they wanted more and he would help people get it. That's why I chose to listen. I also chose to listen because I knew that he had a depth of understanding that I did not. He definitely had a depth of understanding. Now, I met him in 1979. He had already been in the business for a number of years at that point. He had already been studying. And Bob always studied. He studied until the day he died. Why did he study? Because he loved the material and he loved helping people and he loved how it changed his life. And he recognized that nothing stayed the same. He would speak about that on the stage. And so why you choose to listen today, as we talked about a little while ago, is your own reason. Maybe it is because you want more. Maybe it's because you'd like to have a better depth of understanding. Maybe there's something that you're going to hear today that's going to spark something within you that you will be inspired to go for it. Maybe you've been thinking about doing something you've never done before, but you're thinking, hmm, I now believe that it's possible. I recognize that I need to build the belief system, but I believe it's possible for me. And that's why. And that's what we're here for. We're here for you. Bob was here for anyone that was in the audience. Now, this is a segment out of a book by Ralph Waldo Trine, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And I want to touch on this just for a few minutes. And I want you to think about yourself as you, as you listen to this. He who lives in the realization of his oneness with this infinite power, that's the universe, becomes a magnet to attract to himself or herself a continual supply of whatsoever things he desires. Now let's focus on what did I highlight here? What did I underline here? Becomes a magnet. You know what? You're already a magnet. But what we're talking about here and what we do at Dynamic Destinies is we help you magnetize to you a continual supply of whatsoever things you desire because you will want more. It's a natural desire to want more. And what you will learn once you discover is that you can, you can attract anything that you want anything that you want. You just have to ask yourself, do I want it? Do I want it? So whenever any of you are thinking about something you would love, just ask yourself, do I want it? Or you see something, just say to yourself, do I want it? You don't have to know how, just ask yourself that question. If he holds himself, what's, whatever present conditions may be, continually in the thoughts of prosperity, he sets into operation forces that will sooner or later bring him into prosperous conditions. What does it mean to hold yourself? 
It means that you feel as if that's who you are. You're already prosperous. If you want to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire, you've got to feel as if that's who you are, even though there are no evidence in sight. There is no evidence in sight, whatever present conditions may be. You deny the evidence of the senses. You don't look at your current results. This is what Jack Lynn had written. You don't look at your present, present results. You deny that. You imagine you're playing a game and you're acting as if continually in the thought of prosperity. How would a person act if they were continually in the thought of prosperity? How would that person act? What would they be doing? What kinds of decisions would they make? And let me ask you guys a question. Are you willing to be continually in the thought of prosperity? Are you? Type in the chat box if you're willing to be continually in the thought of prosperity. Type in the chat box. Now, that may seem like a ridiculous question to ask because the answer would be an obvious, heck yeah, of course you would be willing to be continually in the thought of prosperity. But how many people hear the question and they ignore it? They ignore it. I love it. JD says, I'm willing. Hell yeah, says iPhone GS. Yeah, okay, good. Yes, it's an important question. And I want you to answer the question because if you're not, you're probably not in the right place. Now, he sets into operation forces that were sooner or later bring him into prosperous conditions. Okay, think about this. He sets into operation. This is why Earl Nightingale said, if you need to attract someone from China, you'll attract someone from China. You don't have to know how. This is why you don't have to know how. You set into operation forces. What are those forces? Well, the forces are the laws of the universe. The universe is going to work in harmony with you when you make decisions of how you want to live. Continually in the thought of prosperity? All right. The universe has got your back. You know what the universe says to every desire that you set? Yes. And that's the undesirable desires as well. Well, they wouldn't be desires, would they? But anytime you claim that you're struggling, that you don't have enough, that you're in lack, what does the universe say? Yes, absolutely. That's true. Or if you say to the universe, you want something, which means you don't have it. You say to the universe, I want something. The universe says, indeed, you do. You want it. So what's the secret to it all? You got to feel as if it's in your life now. That's it. In the degree that he lives in the realization of this oneness, in that degree, he actualizes in himself a power. See, we all have that power. But in this case, we're talking about actualizing that power that will bring to him or her an abundance of all things that are desirable to have. In this way, he comes into possession of a power whereby he can always actualize those conditions he desires, even though you don't know how. And even though everything in your life might not be evident of what you want, it may be the complete opposite of what you want, but that's okay. You hold yourself continually in the thought of prosperity and you're magnetizing a continual supply of whatever you desire. Isn't that a powerful understanding can that alone change your life? What time is it here? We're at 1227, 1228. Like we've only been together here for like 28 minutes. That idea that I just covered off here can change your life positively, profoundly, absolutely. Okay, let's keep going. We got a lot more good stuff to come. Like when I think back to when I began studying these materials and people would ask me, well, how soon was it before you saw the results? Quite often that question is asked because somebody's frustrated that things aren't happening, happening fast enough. Well, what happens is this, when you decide to experience something, you got to imagine that it's already done. And so back in the 1980s, I was working for a software company and they were going bankrupt. We knew they were going bankrupt and I was looking for a new career a change. And I want to work with a large established corporation. And I decided that I was working for a corporation in a career that I loved, earning great money and loving the people that I work with. And so I set the intention. I didn't know where, I didn't know how, I didn't know what company. Now I graduated high school, barely. 
and I never went to college. So I did not have a university degree. I still don't have a university degree or college degree. I did not have continuing education beyond high school and I barely squeaked through high school. And so, you know, a lot of people could consider having a really wonderful career and think of all the reasons why they can't get the job. Don't have the degree, don't have experience, da, da, da. And so I had heard about a role that was available as a national marketing manager at the corporation at the headquarters for Toshiba in Toronto. And I uh, had heard about it from the general manager who happened to be buying my car that I had listed in the paper. And I asked her, I said, well, what would a national marketing manager do? And she told me what the role was. And I said, I could do that. I had no experience, no degree. And for some people, they probably think you have no business applying for a job like that. But I told the general manager who was hiring, I can do that and I could do it really well. And she hired me. She hired me and I won employee of the year in my first year. I set the intention. May not seem like a big deal, but I had a great career. I was in my 20s and I was a national marketing manager for a major worldwide corporation and one employee of the year. And I had an extraordinary job there. Loved it. Really, really enjoyed it. You see, when you decide to do something you've never done before, what a lot of people believe or they think is they have to know the entire way. Well, what's the way? How am I going to get there? You don't have to know how you're going to get there. You just have to decide you're going to get there. What's the first step? Make a decision. That's the first step. Make a decision that you're going to do or be, or have, or experience whatever it is that you want. You will figure out the way when you stay connected to the outcome, as we saw a few minutes ago with Ralph Waldo trying continually. You hold yourself as that person, and you will experience the result. In 1994, I decided to incorporate my own company, and there were a lot of people who wanted to tell me why this was not a good idea. And I didn't listen to any of them because the desire was there. Oh, yes, I didn't have formal education. And no, I did not have parents that were entrepreneurs or had created success. In fact, my father was a janitor and my mother worked for most of her life as a factory worker and then worked in a grocery store as a checkout clerk. And so when I decided to start my own business, there were a number of well-meaning people that wanted to tell me why it wasn't going to work and how the business would be you know, likely bankrupt in a very short period of time. I didn't listen to them. That was not my intention. And I knew enough to know that when I, just like you, focus on an outcome that you desire, you will produce it. And that was 30 years ago. 1994 was 30 years ago. This year, I'm celebrating my 30-year anniversary. I bought a home in 1995 when I got divorced from my husband, and I had no idea how I was going to pay for it, but I made the decision to do it. I held myself in the belief, in the knowing that this home was already mine. Now, many of you have heard this story before, but I want to talk about what we are relating it to here, way to riches. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. I made a decision. Remember what I said about the first step, make a decision. I made a decision to do something, not knowing how I was going to accomplish it. That's your first step. And even once you take that step, it doesn't mean that the fear will just go poof and be gone. In fact, sometimes the fear can be intensified once you make a decision. It's like the reality kicks in going, oh, my goodness, what have I done? And I had that experience as well. But I also know this, and I hope you know this as well, is that negative emotions such as fear, worry, doubt will kill all results. And so what do you do about that? Well, you notice when it's there. The first step is to notice when the negative destructive emotion is there. And then you make a decision that you're going to switch it. And what do you switch it to? What would you love? What would I love is the question that you ask yourself. So when I bought a home and didn't have the money to do it, and I went ahead and did it anyway, I figured I'm going to find a way. And you attract to you everything requisite for the fulfillment of your goal when you stay in harmony with the result. That's what you must do. You got to stay in harmony with the result. And when you do, you will produce the result. When? That's the part we don't know. There is a gestation period that dictates that all goals will manifest 
in a certain period of time. We don't know what that period of time is for goals. We know what it is for some things, for certain seeds, but we don't know what it is for goals. So this could be a challenge. And this is very likely one of the biggest reasons why people give up on their dreams is because they don't see the results or they don't see some kind of change or some kind of positive response within a relatively short period of time. They get frustrated and they give up. And you know when they give up? They usually give up when they're three feet from gold, as the story goes in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Story about the guy who had bought land where he felt there was a gold mine and he wanted to mine for the gold and he started mining for gold and he didn't find the gold and he got so frustrated, he gave up, he sold the property and some guy who had no idea how to mine for gold either bought it. He bought the land. But what he did was he got the experts involved, people that knew how to produce results. And he brought them in, they started mining for gold and they discovered that the previous owner had stopped digging when he was three feet from the biggest gold vein in history. That's what most people do. They give up too early. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Never give up. You don't want to give up. If it's your dream and it's your passion and it's burning inside you, you want to hold on tight to that dream, but not in a negative way. You want to hold on tight to that dream with a sense of knowing this is mine. This is already done. Now, can you do that? Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. How do you do that? You do that through repetition. You've got to continue to impress the thoughts and the feelings into your heart of the result that you desire over and over and over again. It becomes your daily way of being. Daily way of being, as we saw a moment ago. Like my husband, when I was single and I'd been single for a while and I got to a point where I decided, okay, I'm ready to attract my soulmate into my life. And I had girlfriends tell me, well, you know, get online, go to those new dating websites that are out there or go meet them in a bar or whatever. It's like, nah, I don't want to go online. I wasn't really attracted to those online dating websites and I had no desire to go to a bar to meet somebody. And one of my friends said to me, what do you think? He's going to come knocking on your door. That's exactly what he did. Now, I didn't know that was going to be the way that I would meet him. I was out walking my dog one day and I met him. He had just moved in the neighborhood and he was taking care of somebody else's dog who was homeless at the time. They didn't have a place to live. So he was taking care of this dog. And so he knew who I was. He knew I had a dog. And one day he'd been called to fly the prime minister of our country. He was a pilot with the military and he'd been called to fly the prime minister in a hurry. He had to get, you know, get to the airport. And so he knocked on my door and he said, could you please watch my dog for me? And, and I said, sure. So he left his dog with me for the day and came back that night, He came in for a coffee and well, the rest is history. That was 20 years ago now. So this is really a great demonstration of you don't have to know how you're going to attract that result into your life. You have to believe and feel as if it's there now. Now, what did I do as it related to the relationship? I began to feel what it would felt like to have a happy, healthy, loving relationship in my life. I imagined that when I was out walking with my dog, that I was with my significant other and I was holding his hand. I would imagine that we're going out for dinners or imagine we're taking trips together. Imagine that he was in my life and felt the joy of having not just someone in my life, but having someone in my life when I have a really happy, loving relationship. And then he came knocking on my door. All right. So you got to live like that in advance. I wanted a waterfront place. My husband did not. I didn't let that stop me. Now, I didn't argue with him or fight against him. I knew he didn't want a place, but I saw us not only having a waterfront place, but enjoying a waterfront place. And in my mind, I imagined scenes that were vividly real. I want you to hear this. This is very important. There's something that you desire. It's important to have it vivid to your senses. Vivid to your senses means that you're seeing and you're feeling and you're experiencing the end result as if it's already done. So what I declared was that I saw us sitting on the swim platform. I saw the sun setting in front of us. I saw my husband turn to me and say, thank you. Why would he say thank you? 
thank you because he was grateful that I persisted and that I followed through and that we did buy a waterfront place. And that is a photo of Denny and I sitting on the swim platform and him looking at me and thanking me. And that's exactly what happened. You can manifest things with great ease. You have to understand it. Another time I was uh, down in Florida and my husband and I went for a walk one day and I noticed a for sale sign on a lawn. I wasn't looking to move to a different country. I was looking at adding on another home, like getting a vacation home. And so I saw there was a for sale sign. So I stopped and my husband was like, what are you doing? I said, well, there's a for sale sign here. He goes, so, and I said, well, wouldn't it be wonderful? And this is how fast it can happen, right? When you recognize that power that's within you, when you realize that you're connected to the power of the universe, when you can work in harmony with the universe and manifest anything that you desire, you can be manifesting things like that. You ask yourself, do I want it? Do I want it? So I saw this house was for sale. I asked myself, do I want it? Yes, was the answer. My husband was scratching his head. What are you doing? Why are you calling this guy? We're not in the market for a house. Very valid reasons. Now, he's a very left brain, analytical, logical thinking person. Yeah, I get it. I understand why he thinks the way he does. And I respect that he thinks the way he does because that's his paradigms. But I just said to him, would you love that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I guess that would be nice. And I called the realtor, went and saw the home. It was May 16th. And I remember because it was my grandmother's birthday and I bought the house and I set the close date for 60 days later, which was my sister's birthday, July 16th. And at the time, Denny was like, well, where's the cash going to come from to buy this house? Because I wasn't getting a mortgage. You see, a lot of people assume this. Okay. And this has come from paradigms as well. They assume you have to borrow the money to buy it, right? You have to get a mortgage. I didn't want a mortgage. So what I visualized for myself or for us was that we're purchasing this place and paying for it with cash. Think about the question I said earlier, a question you should have already written down. What would I love? What would I love? What would I love? I'd love to buy this home in Florida and pay for it with cash. That's exactly what I did. 60 days later, I bought that cash. Did I have the cash when I signed the deal? Oh, no, I did not. Did I have any of the cash when I signed the deal? Nope. But I believed and I know enough. Now, why would I believe and why do I know enough? Because of the depth of the study. The depth of the study. You want to get in the study and stay in the study. Why? Because your results will get better and better. Why? Because you get better and better and better. I think about when we had bought one of our homes and there was uh, you know, a nice backyard background. In fact, the property went beyond where that black fence is. It was a nice piece of land backed onto a ravine, very beautiful area. And I said to my husband, like, I'm visualizing. I'm visualizing seeing a pool out the back, a bar, a fireplace. We're going to have a hot tub. We had the hot tub too. I drew it all out in a napkin. And then I called a company and uh, that installed pools. And mostly they just installed pools. But I said, could you build this for us? And they said, yes, we can. And of course, my husband was like, it's going to come with a a big price tag. And where's the cash going to come from for that? It's like wherever it is now. You see, you get to a point where you understand how this process works, this process of manifesting. It ended up costing well over 200000 I think it was about $210,000 to put the backyard in that I desired. And I paid for that with cash. Now, at the time, I didn't have the cash to pay for it, but I made the decision. And you know what? You attract everything requisite for the fulfillment of your goal when you are in harmony with that goal. Now, if you haven't wrote that down yet, write that down. Absolutely write that down. Here's another home. This one was about 10,000 square feet, seven, ba seven bedrooms, eight bathrooms, backed onto a private golf course. It was another manifestation that I saw that I decided it was custom made, had won awards, and I decided I'm going to buy it. And we did, we bought that home. We ended up selling it. It was a home that we sold. This is what it looked like from the other side of the pool. It was magnificent. It was quite an extraordinary home. But this is how I've manifested everything from my New York Times bestseller to my relationship, to my perfect health, 
you know, whatever it is, these techniques work for anything and everything. Multiple books, the kinds of clients, the business that you're in, the kind of automobiles that you drive, becoming a professional speaker. I set intentions to share the stage with Bob Proctor, which I did. Set in intentions to take my family on multiple trips. Sometimes I took my son and his friends on trips and pay the whole way. Love doing that. And it's wonderful to have the freedom. And I want you to think about that when you have the freedom to do the things that you want to do whenever you want to do it. And these things and more I've manifested. I'm not telling you this to go, whoa, whoa, look at me and all the things that I've manifested. I want you to know that if this girl who was so insecure that was raised in a very poor environment that had extreme negative beliefs can produce incredible results and become a multimillionaire so can you so can you now the only reason why these things have been manifested in my life is because i chose to study to learn to understand to apply to continually take action and even though i may have felt fear with a number of the decisions that i've made i went for it anyway went for it and you want to feel the fear and go for it anyway because you can change the fear you can change it to faith. See, this is the home that I was raised in. I took this off a Google Earth photo. This is the actual home that I was raised in. It's about 600 square feet, two bedroom. There were six of us in that home. I have two brothers and a sister, all of us in the home. I'm the youngest of four. And it was a very destructive, dysfunctional, abusive environment. Not blaming anyone. It's just the way it was and uh, very unloving. So that's why when you look at my yearbook photo, I was miserable, broke, angry, insecure, disillusioned, and felt it was someone else's fault that my life was a mess. And I know there's people like that blaming other people because they don't know it's ignorance that keeps people stuck. And thank goodness I met Bob Proctor in 1979 to stop that. Now, this photo I had my husband take of me the day that my oncologist called to say the cancer was completely gone. And so two and a half years ago, I'd been diagnosed with metastatic cancer. I just found out recently it was actually stage four. I didn't even know that, but I didn't focus on that. I denied the evidence of the senses. You want to deny the evidence of the senses. Do not speak to what's going on in your life if you don't like it, right? Don't give it energy. Don't whine, complain, moan about what's going on in your life. If you don't like it, you want to energetically connect to what you would love. You want to see and know and believe that what you desire is already in your life. It's in your life now, not sometime in the future, but right now. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time by William James. Believe and your belief will create the fact. Now, it takes time to believe. It takes studying to believe. Sometimes somebody else believes more in you. And that can be the thing that causes you to manifest the things that you desire. I was asking a client of mine uh, recently, I said, what was it that caused you to go ahead and make the decision to start your own business and to do well in, in your business? And she said, it was your belief in me. And I remember Bob Proctor used to say that all the time. If you don't believe, borrow my belief in you because I believe you can do it. Now, I believe any of you can do it. I believe you can. I talk about billionaire Pete, who's on this call right now. I love that Pete joined us. Pete has been a very serious student for a number of years, and he is very focused, and he's building and reinforcing the belief in him that his results are already there, and you want to be doing the same. You want to build that belief by reinforcing it daily by asking yourself, now that I'm living my life this way, how does it feel? How does it feel? You see, feeling is the secret. So we all have these depths of beliefs. Now, some of the beliefs that we have in our, in our consciousness are strong and powerful and positive, and they serve you. But there's other beliefs that are there that are a part of who you are. You've accepted them. They've come into your consciousness, perhaps over the years, that don't serve you. We can't get rid of them. Unlike some disease that we have in our body that we can go in surgically and remove it, this is not the same with our beliefs. They'll always be a part of you. Always be a part of you. I remember asking Bob Proctor one time, when do these beliefs or these paradigms stop battling? And he said, never. And it's true. So that's why you want to be in the study. That's why you want to replace 
your mind, your consciousness with only the ideas and the understandings of what you desire. You want to saturate, saturate your consciousness with what you desire. If someone is seriously sick, what do they do? They put them in the hospital. And if they're on death's door, they put them in ICU, the intensive care unit. Why? Because they need serious attention. You know, sometimes people require serious attention with their beliefs as well. That's what happened for me. I knew I needed to give serious attention to the beliefs that were firmly impressed into my subconscious mind in order to change my results. Now, we don't judge the beliefs that are there. We don't criticize ourselves for having them. We don't whip ourselves because we thought a certain way or felt a certain way. We let that go. You got to love yourself. You got to celebrate that what you have is a new moment. You've got this moment and you're going to have the next moment and the next moment. You can't do anything about the past. Maybe find the blessing in it. Learn from it. Don't do that again if there's something that you did that didn't serve you. And so that can serve you. But you want to build beliefs so strong and so deep within you that you put yourself on a trajectory for success that it's like a servo mechanism. And a servo mechanism will lock on target, will lock on a specific outcome and even if you deviate, even if you go, you know, another way, or you feel like you're going the opposite direction of where you desire to be, you will land there if it's your dominant way of being. Your dominant way of being should be the way that you desire, should be the way of riches, the way of riches, not thinking from the place of I'd like to get to that point. You think as if you're already there. You're already there. You've already accomplished everything that you desire. So would you like to get on and stay on the road to riches? Would you? Type in the chat box. See, when I went to the Bob Proctor seminar in January 1979, he opened up my mind to a whole new way of thinking, a new way of being, which I had never heard of or studied or understood before. And at the end of that night, he offered some continuing education. And what he offered was an eight-week program that if we got involved, that we could expand our depth of understanding as well. And I chose to join that program. I didn't have the money to do it. And I went into further debt to enroll in that program, but I did it. Why? Because I knew that he had a depth of understanding. I did not, that he could help me get to where I wanted to go. And that's what he did. And when I finished that eight-week program, I signed up for another eight-week program, another eight-week program. And I have likely invested hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars. I don't know. But what is it worth? Like, what is it worth to you to feel good every day? What is it worth to you to be happy, to find that joy, to feel that freedom, to live your life free? Is there a price that you could put on that? Is there? I don't think so. Like if you said to me, okay, Peg, I'll give you a billion dollars, but I'm taking away your relationship. Would I take it? Not a chance. If you said to me, I'll give you a billion dollars and take away what's most important to you. I, there's no amount of money that I would take to receive the benefit of what I've studied over these years. No amount of money. Absolutely. Happy people are healthy people, says Jacqueline. Yeah. So Mindy says, so do we stick our head in the sand about our current situation circumstances? No, don't stick your head in the sand. It doesn't make it go away. You acknowledge that it's there, but you do not remain emotionally involved in it. You could look at your bank account and it may not be the way you are, but don't feel bad about it. What you want to do is you want to create this scenario in your mind. And this is really important. You create the scenario in your mind that will be a depiction or a reflection of what you desire, even though it may not be there. In my drawer beside me right here in my office, I have a mocked up bank account, mocked up bank account. And on this bank account, I've taken the logo from the bank from online. I've copied the bank accounts that I have and I put them on a, in a Word document and then I added my own totals, my own summaries. I've done the same thing with investment reports that I have 
or sales reports and things like that. You only want to see what you desire and why you do that. This is really important. Okay. I want you to understand this. Why you do that is so that you can get and remain emotionally involved in that outcome. Okay. So when you hear deny the evidence of the senses, it doesn't mean put your head in the sand and ignore it or ignore your responsibilities. Not at all. What it means is do not remain emotionally involved in your current results, meaning you're upset or frustrated or angry or disillusioned. Those emotions are destructive and they will continue to produce undesirable results. Absolutely. Okay, so Ian and Natalie are here. And I love their story. They've manifested some amazing things in their life. Said not sticking to the emotions is the tricky part. Even though it's in your mind, it feels okay for a bit, but it's strengthening that feel good and belief that it's happening. It's absolutely the tricky part. You're definitely right, but you got to do it. You got, this is where discipline comes in. Discipline is really important. Now you get that through constant study and application. That's where the results actually come is from constant study and application. Now, the secret to success has already been revealed to you. I'm talking about it throughout this event. I'll talk more about it when we get to the end of the event as well. So definitely hang in there because I want to make sure that you get this. I want you to get this at the cellular level. Why? Because I want you to produce better results. I want to hear of your success stories. I want to hear about the transformations that you've occurred. I want to hear about you, how you attracted the money that you desire or how you created whatever it is that you desire to create in your life. Now, I've used this secret to manifest everything that's great in my life from multiple properties, dream homes, millions of dollars in revenue, millions of dollars in personal net worth, first class travel, my amazing marriage, perfect health, luxury vehicles, prestigious life, finest quality of items. But you know something? When you're a serious student, as I am, I'm a student and a teacher, when you're a serious student and you're someone who implements with regularity and produces great results, it doesn't mean that you won't have challenges. Everybody has challenges. As I said, two and a half years ago, I got a diagnosis. That wasn't a desirable diagnosis, but it is what it is. I found the blessing and I knew what I needed to do. So the fact that I had been so deep into the study for so many years served me. It served me to get past this diagnosis. And what was interesting is at exactly the same time that I had been diagnosed and I began to go through treatment, a very good friend of mine got diagnosed with the exact same cancer in the mouth, in the neck. Now his life ended last June. His life ended last June. Now he was stage four as well. And I'm going to a celebration of life for him soon. For some reason, they took a year before they're doing it, but they're doing it. And he wasn't into the materials. He wasn't strong in mind. You want to become strong in mind. You want to be prepared to deal with any issues as they come along. And that only occurs by being in the study and staying in the study. So if you want your results to change, if you want to change the results, you must go to the cause. What causes the effects in your life? It's you. It's your conditioning. And that's great news because it doesn't mean that it's somebody else's power or somebody else's decision how you're going to live your life. You're the one that's in control of what's going on in your life. And like the statement that as a man or woman or person feels in their heart, so is he. You've got to see yourself as the successful person. You got to see yourself accomplishing the things that you desire to accomplish. You got to believe that they are already done. And you won't have that belief system right now. You got to build it and you build it through the study and the application. Okay. Connie says, at some point, I'd love to know exactly what you did to eliminate the cancer. Everyone would love this information. Are you writing a book about this? You should. I love that, Connie. I love that you're asking. And absolutely, I did write a book about it. And here it is. I'm going to show you the book. It's called Savvy Wisdom 2. That's the book that I wrote about it. Now, I wrote it in a very unique way. It's the second book in a trilogy, but this is exactly. But what I'm talking about today, what we're talking about uh uh, in this way to riches seminar, I love Tanya's question, is exactly what I did. 
I focused on seeing myself healthy. Even though my physical body wasn't at the time, I just imagined and saw myself and felt as if I was healthy. So that's why this stuff works on anything. Just like you, Connie, with your manifestations that you're working on and what you're applying in your life, it's the same thing that I apply to my health is I saw myself as healthy. I've had so many people reach out to me about that specific thing. So it makes me smile when I see the request. I've had people call me and say, would you talk to my sister? Would you talk to my friend? Would you talk to this person or that person? It's like, it's not any different, whether it's health or a car or a home or a business or, you know, a significant other. It's the same process. You decide this is your result. I decided I was in a healthy body, even though at the time there was some unwanted experiences going on. It's not like I ignored it. The doctor said, we're going to do radiation. Okay. They seem to know what they're talking about. I trusted in the oncologists and I followed their direction. What I did was I followed my own direction, plugged in my earbuds, listened to my power life script for hours every single day. And because I got physically sick and I was flat out and I was hospitalized for a while as well. I just listened and listened and listened, but it's not enough to listen. Do you know what you need to do in addition to listening? Do you know what you need to do? Type in the chat box. Wow. Feel. Yes, Donna. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. You got to feel. You got to feel it. You got to feel. Absolutely. Thank you guys for writing all those answers. Okay. So Ian and Natalie said, my mom got told she had six months to live. And now this year, she is six years later and still here. And we feel blessed for every moment we have. I love that. I love that. That's so beautiful. In 1986, my father was diagnosed with cancer as well. And they said he had a 50-50 chance of living and he wanted to live. So I introduced him to Louise Hay. And, uh, and I took up golf so that I could play with my father. And he lived for 20 some odd years beyond that diagnosis as well. So there are many, many stories of people that have overcome health challenges by believing, by feeling as if what they desire is already in their life. Okay, let's keep going. I've still got a bunch of slides more, and then we're gonna I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Kayla in a little bit. So you build the idea of prosperity in your conscious mind. Build the idea of what the prosperity is that you're looking for, and then you get emotionally involved in it. So you got to get clear on that. And this isn't something you do just for a few minutes every day. This should be your dominant way of being. And that comes through discipline. That comes through the conditioning your mind. So you must be clear on exactly what you want. What do, what do you want? What would you love? And if you haven't already become clear on that, take some time after we finish up today to write out, what would you love? What would you love? What would you love in your bank account? What would you love to be earning? What would you love to have in investments? What would you love to give away? What would you love as it relates to money? And you don't have to know how you're going to do it. You don't. I mean, I've been doing this my adult life, making decisions to do things I had no clue how I was going to do. And you realize that this is how it works. This is how manifestation works, is that you understand that your responsibility is to feel, just like this gentleman in this photo, has his eyes closed, he looks pretty confident, he's visualizing his desires. And again, even if there's no evidence of it in sight. Now, can you do this? Yes, you can do this. You direct your thoughts. You direct your thoughts to be in harmony. If it's a home, like a dream home, you go to sleep in that home. You may not be there, but you go to sleep in that home. You wake up in that home. You're doing your dishes at your sink in that home. You see and believe and know that it's already done and you will figure it out. So you sabotage your results when you constantly feel anxious about the how. If somebody says to me, I don't know how, or I'm frustrated or whatever, they're in their way. Or people that do this. This is a common thing as well, where they've set an intention. And they've decided that they're going for it, but yet, you know, they've been doing some things that cause them to feel the connection to the outcome as if it's in their life. And then they don't see any evidence of it. Two months go by and nothing's changed. What do they do? Frustrated, right? This doesn't work. And I know I've been there. I was there years ago. I felt that this stuff doesn't work only to realize that it's not the stuff. It's us. 
we haven't waited long enough. You want to wait as the one who understands. That's what Solomon said. You wait as the one who understands. Think about that statement. Wait as the one who understands. You understand that you're a powerful being, that you can manifest anything that you desire, that your responsibility is to feel as if it's there now. That's you're waiting with a conviction of knowing this is already done. I'm already in my dream home. I'm already a New York Times bestseller. I already have my wonderful relationship. I've already accomplished this. That's how you wait. You wait energetically connected to your outcome, feeling and embracing it, denying the evidence of the senses, regardless of what the bank account says, regardless of where you're living currently, regardless of the ranking of your book, you deny all of that and you only see the results. So Tanya had asked me about the Oscar that's behind me here. And I saw the question in the chat box a, a moment ago. That's a visualization for me. And the visualization is that the Savvy Wisdom book series, which is a trilogy, I have it over on the left-hand side of my bookshelf here, has been made into a movie, but not just any movie, a life-changing Academy Award-winning classic, a movie that is changing hundreds of millions of people's lives. That's what I see. And I've created that vision where? In my own mind and accepted it in my heart. So create the vision in your mind, you accept it in your heart. Create the vision in your mind, accept it in the heart. So think about that. Create the vision in your mind and accept it in your heart. So recognize the opportunities for you to change your life are right here, right now. You wouldn't have joined us today if you didn't feel there is more for you because there's absolutely more for you. And I absolutely believe in all of you. But do you know what the fastest way to riches is? Now, I know some of you may answer with something like consciousness. I'm talking more of a practical way here. Do you know what the fastest way to riches is? And it's not Bitcoin, by the way, or anything like that. I just want to see what your answers are. Type in the little chat box here. MSI says, Tammy, I like that. AI generated books. That's cool. Doing things in a certain way, hard work. No, not, not necessarily. That's another thing that I think it was Napoleon Hill who said, if you believe that hard work alone will generate riches, perish the thought. I love that. Make a decision, imagination. You know, it really is. <coughs> Believing in already in possession of it. Yes. Okay. Um, a glass of water. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> power life script. Yeah, definitely power life script. Absolutely. It's entrepreneurship. I'm talking about the practical way, not investments or whatever. It's entrepreneurship, running your own business, doing your own thing. Now, some of you are already entrepreneurs and some of you may be doing well as an entrepreneur, but I suspect if you are, you probably want to do better. And could you become an entrepreneur? Even though you're working in a corporation right now or have a job, absolutely. And that's what I did. I incorporated my company while I still worked. Like I still, I worked for AT and T when I was uh, when I incorporated my company. I still carried that income for a little while until I built the business and got the revenue going, and then I cut the cord of the corporate job and moved into entrepreneurship. But MSI was one of the answers. I actually teach how to create multiple sources of income. Is it being an author? That's one way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be an author. If you have a desire to experience more riches in your life, we're here way to riches, I can help you. Regardless of the field, regardless what it is, because we experience the results through consciousness. We experience the results through consciousness. That's what you need to understand. Benjamin Franklin said an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And the truth is, if it is to be, it's up to me. If it is to be, it's up to me. Not Peggy, but you. If you want to change your results, then you have to make a decision that you're changing your results. And you have to make a decision that you're changing the results now. Absolutely now. You've got to make that decision and we can help you with that. You got to see yourself as the person that you desire to be. This is the concept of self. A lot of people don't believe in themselves. You've got to build the belief in yourself. Now, a lot of people were told as children that they can't do it or what are you dreaming for? It's 
I was told that. Who do you think you are? Questions like that were asked. And they don't support a growth experience, but you're in charge of that. You see yourself as a successful person. You do the mirror work and you look at yourself in the mirror and you congratulate yourself on the accomplishments and say, hey, you know, you've done it. You did it. Way to go. And feel really good about what you have accomplished. And what you're ultimately doing is strengthening yourself is what you're doing. This is a little segment from a book called The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard. It's a chapter called Subjective Control. I just want to, I'm going to read this real quick. And I just want to highlight a couple of points here because I still have a bunch more slides to cover off as well. But here's what he said. Your imagination is able to do all that you ask in proportion to the degree of your attention. That's why you got to give this your attention over a long period of time. All progress, all fulfillment of desire depend upon the control and concentration of your attention. Attention may be either attracted from without or directed from within. Attention is attracted from without when you are consciously occupied with the external impressions of the immediate present. That's when you continue to look at your present results. It doesn't mean you put your head in the sand. The very lines of this page are attracting your attention from without. Your attention is directed from within when you deliberately choose what you will be preoccupied with mentally. It's like if you got a bank account that's not the way you want it to be, then you direct your attention from within seeing how you want it to be. It is obvious that in the objective world, your attention is not only attracted by, but is constantly directed to external impressions. <coughs> but your control in the subjective state is almost non-existent. <coughs> For in this state, attention is usually the servant and not the master, the passenger and not the navigator of your world. <coughs> there is an enormous difference between, <coughs> sorry guys, I've been doing a lot of talking today. I've been narrating um, one of my books. Savvy wisdom too, actually. There is an enormous difference between attention directed objectively and attention directed subjectively. And the capacity <coughs> to change your future depends on the latter. So when you are able to control the movements of your attention in the subjective world, you can modify or alter your life as you please. But this control cannot be achieved if you allow your attention to be attracted constantly from without. Each day, set yourself the task of deliberately withdrawing your attention from the objective world, which is your undesirable results, and focus it subjectively on what you desire. In other words, concentrate those thoughts or moods, feelings, which you deliberately determine. Then those things that are now restrict you, that now restrict you, will fade or drop away. The day you achieve control of the movements of your attention in the subjective world, you are master of your fate. You will no longer accept the dominance of outside conditions or circumstances. You will not accept life on the basis of the world without. Having achieved control of the movements of your attention, having discovered the mystery hid from the ages that Christ in you is in, is your imagination. You will assert the supremacy of imagine, imagination and put all things in subjection to it. You want to give the attention of what you desire. You must know, see, and believe that you already have that which you desire. Now, those of you that are in debt right now and don't want debt or have a bad credit rating, you want to see yourself with a perfect credit score. I remember that's what I did <laughs> years ago. I decided that my credit score was a perfect 900. In fact, I have that in my Power Life script. It's a perfect 900. It's a perfect 900. You're looking at a screen right now. And I went to my bank account the other day. I pulled up my credit score. It was 900. I captured it, put it in here. Now that was something years and years ago that I put on my vision board. I saw it. I believed it. You want to see yourself surrounded in riches. You see yourself, you believe. Now it's subjective. It's not in your life now, but the mood, right? As Neville Goddard said, is what you feel. Are you guys willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Yes? Type in the chat box if you're willing to do that. Yay, all right, good. <clears throat> Apple cider vinegar. <laughs> 
Yeah, and some honey. Yeah, I have all that in the kitchen. Great idea, Andrea. Thank you. Okay, good. You've got to be willing. I want you to understand what happens when you decide to do something you've never done before, and more importantly, how to handle it. Like what will happen is your paradigms, your old belief system will put up a royal battle and they will fight you. And you just recognize that's what's going on. Oh, I know what's going on. That's the old belief system is trying to pull me back. Don't let it override it. Be ready. Ask yourself, what would I love? What would I love? What would I love? Now that this is in my life, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel? You see and believe and know. Direct your attention as we just read. And the paradigms, the blocks that are in your way, they're just illusions. They're beliefs that you've created that are illusions. They're not true. You're not limited. It's not because you don't have the right education or you're old enough or young enough or don't live in the right country or whatever other excuse or reason that you can find. They're simply an illusion that you can break through. See, when I decided to become a national marketing manager of an international organization and I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the education, but I didn't allow it to hold me back. I broke through. I went past it. How? With imagination with the thinking process, with the feeling process. And it's ignorance that keeps people bound. They're ignorant. They don't understand. Ignorance meaning not knowing. They don't know that they have the power. They don't know that the universe is ready to serve. They don't know that once they get to the dominant feeling of having what they desire, that they will manifest it into physical form and that it works for anything. That's simply ignorance. So you can decide right now, that you are no longer going to live with less than you desire. Is that something that you've decided? Type in the chat box if that's something that you've decided for yourself right here, right now. Yes? Okay, good. Good. All right. I would expect to see 150 yeses here. I think there's 150 people approximately that were on the call. All in, baby. I like it. Yes. Okay, good. Wonderful. Now, why would anyone not say yes? I don't know. Maybe they don't think they can do it. Maybe they don't want it enough. It's important to want it. It's important to have that desire within your heart. And I can help you get there. But you allow success to become your way of life. This is what you do. You actually say yes. You prepare to embrace your dreams with a resounding yes. Prepared, meaning I'm accepting of the good that is rightfully mine, regardless of what's already there, regardless of what the belief system may be. Now you have the option to persist in hardship or opt for a life of ease. See, this is where I come in. <clears throat> because I've been there, done that, I wanna show you how to produce better results. I wanna show you how to produce results consistently and at an accelerated rate. Now we can't force things to happen, but we can allow, we can get better at allowing and we can get better at accepting good in our life. And so you choose. And a lot of people don't even realize that they're choosing struggle. They continue to struggle and life does not have to be that way. So I wanna just share with you a few people that I've been blessed to serve that have embraced their dreams with a resounding yes, like Karen Allen. She lives right here in Ottawa. And she said that I told her she could be a millionaire one year. She believed that and she made it. She made it happen. Uh, Deborah Sky King wanted to serve people, wanted to do her own thing, wanted to create programs. And I gave her an idea and she developed a, a program and got people enrolled. And within a very, very short period of time, I think it was three days, she generated over $100,000. She was ready for it. Dr. Videa, a medical doctor who decided she wanted more freedom in her life. She's a mom doctor, married, and she wanted to experience more freedom. And she followed my guidance. Dr. Stacia Pierce, a very successful woman, wonderful speaker, coach, great author as well. And she wanted to increase her revenue. And we worked together for three months in private mentoring and she doubled her income. But you gotta be ready to embrace real prosperity, like prosperity that you can continue to grow and expand on and transform your life. Whatever area that is, transform your life or your business, you definitely need the right guidance. Could I have done this if I didn't study? No. Could I have done this if I didn't get the right direction and guidance from the experts that knew what they were talking about? Definitely not. It would have been struggle. I'm not even sure if I'd be here today if I hadn't 
become a very serious student, student who not only understood, but applied what I was learning. But no experience is required. Desire is what's required. If you have the desire, you can do it. And it's a lot easier than what you think because you can condition yourself for success and which will put you on a trajectory for faster results as well. So if you're looking to take your results to the next level, there's there's a number of ways that we can help you. And I'm going to have Kayla explain, the, explain that in a minute. But I have a few more points that I want to cover off before I turn over to Kayla. We still have a few more things to do. I'm going to cover off a few more slides. And then I'm going to turn over to Kayla. She's going to talk about a couple of couple ways that we can help you. And we're going to do questions. And then I want to finish off with reiterating and highlighting what the secret to success is as well. So I love this statement. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. I love that. I love that because it really speaks to decisions that we make daily. And the decisions that we make today will influence our tomorrow and our next day and our next day. So if you think about some of the things that you've done in your past that have been really positive and profound, that have really worked in your favor, I bet you're saying thank you for those things. I'm certainly thankful that I attended that Bob Proctor seminar that night. I'm thankful that I decided to invest in myself and take his programs over and over and over again. I'm thankful that I decided to buy all the books and devour them and apply what I was learning. So these are the things that you do that are progressive, that are positive, that support you in your life. And what you learn with what we teach is not taught in schools. And the value is beyond comprehension, as I was saying earlier. You know, what if someone offered me money for things in my life, for the way I live my life, there's no amount of money, no amount of money. What I've learned and what I've applied has changed every area of my life and not just my life, but my family's life as well. So your potential I know is untapped. I know it. Most people it is. And you may amaze and delight yourself with what you can create and what you can produce. I know I've talked to a number of clients that have done just that but you have that power within you and you have that power now. So when you think about what you'd really love, the desire is there, but the belief is probably not there yet. That's not a criticism or a judgment. It's the truth. It's not there. Therefore, you have to build the belief and that's going to take the right guidance and the right time. Now, the biggest benefit for you to achieve these goals, whether it's riches or otherwise, is not that you'll have it. It's for who you become because what you learn is repeatable. You can do it again and again and again as you're hearing, not only from my results, but from other results as well. And another huge impact is that the impact that your under understanding has on any goal in the future and the depth of understanding can create better results. So I've been studying success for almost 50 years, been applying the principles and creating phenomenal results. And then two and a half years ago, I was faced with a health challenge. I had never had that significant health challenge before, but what did I do? I used the understanding for manifestation to create great physical results as well. So it's applicable to all areas of your life. Now, financial benefits, you'll discover that you can earn whatever you desire. It doesn't matter what your education is or what your age is. You get to live more comfortably. You can help others, which I personally happen to love. You can help your family if that's something you desire. You can serve people better and there's no limit. There's absolutely no limit to what you can experience in your life. And we're really talking about strengthening you, the version of you that's already there. So when you've strengthened yourself, you find it much easier to go through the challenging times. And it's very, very easy to slip back. See, your paradigms are always in control of us. Now, if we have paradigms that are non-supportive, then we want to build the, we want to build new ones that we can be overriding the old version. They're still a part of who we are. And you get that with the right guidance. So the three best ways to guarantee your success is to study, understand, and apply. That's what numerous successful people have done. They study, they understand, and apply. That's what Bob Proctor did. That's what I do as well. So if you just imagine for a moment you're living your life where you have the freedom to do what you want whenever you want, how incredible would that be? Can you do that for a moment? Can you just go to that place and imagine that your bank account's filled? Perhaps you have a desire to be a multimillionaire and it's already there. You're earning the kind of money that most people only dream about. 
Maybe you're doing like Bob used to talk about earning more money that, while you sleep than you could ever spend while you're awake, rich beyond your wildest dreams. How does that feel? How does it feel when you imagine that? What does that feel like in your heart? Type in the chat box. If you're doing that right now, if you're really feeling that right now, what are you feeling? What are the emotions that you're feeling? Free, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Realistic, I love that answer, Albert. That's incredible. I feel loved, yeah, amazing, for sure. Expansive, yeah, at peace. Beautiful life, joy, joy and gratitude. Fearless, yeah, accomplished. Warm and fuzzy. I like that, Vicky. That's good. Enough. Complete. Beautiful. Light. Powerful. Empowered. Amazing. Super impactful. Accomplished. Excellent. My heart is warm. I love it. All right. Thrilled, says Maria. That's what you're doing. You're embracing the experience now. You want to bring it in and hold it. You want to hold it with your will, as Bob used to say. Hold it with your will. Hold that feeling within you. You see, you just demonstrated you've got the ability to feel it, but you want to consistently feel it. You want this to become your dominant way of being. And you can do that by being in this study. Imagine having your results literally take off. You know, looking at going in the future a year and looking back after you've been applying these materials successfully and effectively and looking at what you've accomplished, like, wow. And then you realize, wow, I did that and I can do so much more. And there's a great, wonderful feeling of doing what you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want. It's a wonderful freedom. And it's everyone's birthright. It's certainly your birthright. Being able to buy a home just because you happen to see there's a for sale sign, doesn't matter what the price is. Don't look at the price. Do you want it is the question that you ask yourself. Or you take luxurious vacations with family or friends and going anywhere in the world, traveling first class. How incredible that is. <laughs> you see, high achievements begin at the end of the comfort zone. A lot of people think it's better to step, you know, to stay in comfort, but it's not. It's better to step forward in growth. Success begins when you step out of your comfort zones. That's where it happens. And anybody has the opportunity, everybody, everyone that's on the call today, you've all got the opportunity to join the ranks of the 1% income earners in the world. And you just decide. I remember when I was doing a program a number of years ago called Making a Million Look Small. And I did a presentation on kids, children that had earned millions of dollars. You know, why did that happen? Well, sometimes they haven't built the paradigms that are negative or destructive or debilitating. And so they don't know any different. There's an ignorance example that actually served those children. But can anyone do that at any time, regardless of what they've already created or haven't created in their life? Definitely they can do it. So if you have the desire, I can definitely show you the way. I can absolutely show you the way because you hold the power. You've got the power. There isn't anyone here that doesn't have the power within them to create the riches in their life that they desire. It is yours to experience. You get to decide that it's yours. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just change gears a little bit here. And I'm going to invite Kayla to come into the spotlight. And she's going to take over for a little bit. And I'm going to go on the sidelines for a little while. I'm going to come back in a bit. We're going to be taking questions. And I want to talk to you more about what that secret to riches is. Okay. But Kayla wants to share with you what we can do to help you get to where you want to go, to give you the right guidance to accomplish the things that, that you desire. And so I'm going to turn it over to the beautiful Kayla, who is not only a part of the Dynamic Destinies team, but she's also my daughter-in-law and the mother <laughs> of my wonderful grandchildren that I love with all my heart. So Kayla, take it away. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Peggy. And thank you for having me on the call today. What a phenomenal call it has been. I know a lot of you at this very moment might be thinking, oh, this girl is going to come on here and she's going to want to sell me a whole bunch of stuff. And you know what? I'm going to just opt out. I'm going to invite you to stay a little bit longer. And the reason why I'm going to invite you to stay a little bit longer is because I think that you need to. I think that it's not as easy as just being here, being present today, and then deciding, 
Uh, this was really good information. I'm so glad I was here and I took all of this in and then just leaving. Because what happens once we leave this environment? Well, the paradigms start to flood in. They start to take over and they take over everything that we're feeling. So I have a question for you now that you had all this information. Do you believe that you can be successful? Do you believe that within a month you could be incredibly rich? I want you to put it in the chat box. Type it in the chat box for me. I'm just looking to see the chat box. Some yeses. Do you believe that you can be rich? So what is it that, that we can do for you today? What is it that we can do to help you? <laughs> I love that. I say, yes, I would love to. Yes, I would love to be rich. Absolutely. All of you, every single one of you that attended today has the opportunity and can be rich. Every single one of you can change your life and be as rich as possible. So what is it that we're offering you? We're offering you an exclusive invitation to wealth. The ability to change your life, the ability to put the paradigms aside and become the wealthiest version of yourself. And that really consists of you taking action on your life. So how do you take action? In this world, we think applying the study, absolutely. Taking in the information, you know, understanding it, absolutely. But it's so much more than that. It's about being a part of a community. It's about being a, having a mentor, somebody who's going to guide you every step of the way, who's going to, whenever you're, you know, on the path and you veer off of it a little bit is going to almost smack you back into it and say, hey, what are you doing? Get back onto the path to success. This is where you need to be. Or these are the actions that you need to take. It's your exclusive invitation to wealth. So what is our offer? Well, our offer is an all access pass that we have. And this wonderful value pass includes multiple different programs for you. And this is the thing that we're going to be offering you today. We have skipping levels. Some of you may already who are on the call today be a part of this skipping levels program. So skipping levels has a value of $21,994. And this program is an exclusive program that you get to attend with Peggy. You have calls, she's going to mentor you, she's going to court you, she's going to direct you into the way that you need to be. We have MSI Entrepreneur, which is the value of 9997. And this beautiful program is how to earn multiple different sources of income. We have Club Achieve, which to me, I just would like to say that Club Achieve is one of the most wonderful programs that we offer because it's a program that you get to study every single day with Peggy. Could you imagine waking up every single morning and having Peggy at your disposal right there in the morning? That's what Club Achieve is. Club Achieve is a program that is so jammed with value. It is starting your morning every single morning on the right track. So if you wake up in the morning and you were saying, oh, you know, I'm feeling a little groggy. I don't really feel like doing this today. Ugh. I feel icky. Imagine hopping on a call with Peggy at 9 a.m. and having her read a book with the rest of the group with you. And then it changes your whole visualization, your whole focus for the day in a positive way. That's what Club Achieve is. It's live access to Peggy every single morning. And that value is 1970. AI Author Advantage. Now, this one I know Peggy loves. This one is an incredible program because this program, and if you're up and coming and, and if you have been living under a rock, you won't know what AI is, but AI is now a wonderful feature that if you are an author, if you are a business owner, if you are looking to create emails, has the ability to you know advance your life in these wonderful, wonderful ways and can help you to do that. And Peggy's going to teach you how to properly use AI to apply it to your business, to your author life, to everything that we have to offer. And it's really a wonderful program. So the all access pass holds a value of $34,985. That's really the value that you're getting from this program. And you might be sitting there going, oh my God, you know, and that paradigms come flooding back in and you're allowing them to, you see that number and you want to veer away. But here's the reality about that, okay? And I just wanted to bring it up. Imagine waking up every morning knowing that you're investing in a life and abundance and fulfillment 
What if I told you it was just $35 a day? Would you do it? Could you go to a restaurant today and easily spend $35 on a plate of food? Something to nourish your body, go out with friends, have a drink. Could you easily do it? Put it in the chat box for me. I want to know, would you easily invest $35 in yourself today going to a restaurant with friends? I want to see your answers. Put yes in the chat box. I could easily do this. I think that the majority of people can easily afford $35 a day to go to a restaurant. And I think that a lot of people don't see that this as easy as that. Yes, Joanne says, yes, I could easily, $35 a day, that's it. That's all you're investing. And that's really what our value is. So we have um, this program. So, you know, you're probably still thinking, Kayla, I don't know. The chance to change happen if I'm going to change or not. Like I, I it, it seems like a lot. So what happens if you don't decide to enroll? What happens if you don't decide to change? Nothing. Nothing happens. You're going to continue living the same life that you're living right now, tomorrow, the next day, the day after that. Because you have to have actions in your life to change. If you want to see results that change in your life, if you want to see actual results happen, you need to make a change. And how do you do that? You enroll in Peggy's programs. You seek guidance from higher mentors. You have beautiful clients. You know, you join a community of people. And that's how you ha have the ability to change. When I first met Peggy, I was in a very negative environment with my family. My family, um, you know, they weren't very uplifting people. I think that a lot of people can feel that from here. They could see that, you know, their lives aren't exactly, they weren't brought up in an environment that was healthy, that was uplifting. They were brought up in an environment where people, you know, judge them. Like my parents are wonderful, wonderful people, but they're very negative people. And so I wasn't raised in this positive environment. And when I met Peggy, she really, really changed my life for the better. She allowed me to believe that I could manifest anything that I desired, anything that I wanted in my life. When I was 19 years old, I got pregnant, which was a shock for me. This was a very, very big shock. It was scary because you don't think at 19 years old, you can, you know, manage having a pregnancy and moving forward in life. And Peggy believed in me. She believed that I could be so much more than I was. So I decided that I was going to listen to her and I was going to change. I started applying the principles. I started applying the study of this information. I started studying every day. I started writing down my abundance. I started doing things like that. And I started to see shifts happening in my life. And they were minuscule. They were very small in the beginning because I wasn't applying it properly. I was just taking pieces of what she was saying and applying it. And that's what a lot of people do. They don't register for the programs. They don't register for things, but they instead they take the knowledge that they received and they apply little bits and pieces of it. And they start to see small little changes. Actually, before getting on this call, we received a message from somebody and he reached out to us and said, oh, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Peggy, because I applied a little bit of knowledge that I saw from your Instagram feed and I got my first client today and it, it, and it made me feel so good and I'm so excited about it. And, and that was a message that we just received while I was on this call. And he sent that message and I, it was, I was blown away. I was like, wow, imagine what you could do if Peggy was mentoring you. You took this small little bit of knowledge, applied it, you know, to your day-to-day -day life from her Instagram page and you like have your first client. Imagine if you were being mentored by Pre Peggy and said, you could have 20 clients in a week. You could have 30 clients. And I mean, I mean, there's no limitations as to what you can do with your business. So a lot of people, you know, they have these limiting beliefs. Even after attending these webinars, they think, well, you know, it's not for me. I really appreciate everything, you know, the information I was given, but it's not for me. And that's a paradigm. And that's a paradigm that you must eliminate. Absolutely. Today, it has to leave. because you can achieve success just like Peggy McCall, just like Bob Proctor, just like 
anybody never will God, you are equal to them. Do you believe that you're equal? Put it in the chat box. Say yes, if you believe that you're equal and you can achieve as much success as Peggy McCall. Don't be shy. Oops. <laughs> or more. Or more. Yeah, more. Yeah. There's so much more. Yeah, absolutely. So much more. Sorry, so I didn't mean to I, I interrupt. Actually, I guess I did mean to interrupt. I wanted to comment on a couple of things, Kayla, that I saw in the right-hand side. And this is relative to what you were talking about, Kayla, when you were asking them about, you know, the choices they're making and, and choosing to be su successful. And I was thinking about even the example that you gave on, you know, going to a restaurant or, you know, some people go to Starbucks or whatever. What's the benefit of that? Now, granted, you, you eat every day. There's definitely a, a benefit on that. But this is so different. There's there's no price that you can pay on the investment that you make in yourself as well. And I think if people just decide, you know, that they want to do it, that they can do it. But I noticed a couple of comments in the right hand side. And this is what I wanted to reference is I saw a couple of comments that said on my way. And I saw another comment that said, and it was Ian and, and Natalie, actually, even in a few weeks was the question. And I was thinking to myself, listen, I want you to, those of you that would like to have uh, success, there's my granddaughter, uh, in a uh, more rapid way, that's a bonus that we have her here, in a more rapid way, here's what you do. It's not on my way. You don't look at success or riches as it is on your way. You embrace it now, right now. So when Ian and Natalie had written, I know they're they're great students as well, you know, in a couple of weeks, if you believe it, yes. But what you have to do, whether it's two weeks, three weeks, three years or whatever, you got to embrace it now. You got to know and believe it's in your life now. And when it's going to get there is going to be dependent on two things. One, the gestation period. And two, is that the dominant way of being that you have chosen? It has to be the dominant way of being that you have chosen. And you got to condition yourself to think that way, to really, really think that way. And so you feel and embrace riches in your life now. You be that person now. It's all about the now. I, in fact, now write out my goal statements this way. I am relaxed in the knowing now that. Okay. And I suggest if you have a goal statement, you have your goals written, Write it that way. I am relaxed in the knowing now that. Now, what I love about the beginning of that sentence is that it's saying you're relaxed, right? You're relaxing. You're accepting. It's like it becomes natural for you. In fact, in the power of awareness, in the chapter on failure, Neville Goddard says the reason why people don't accomplish the things that they want to accomplish is because they don't feel it natural. They don't feel it natural. You want to feel it natural. So what we do and what Kayla had talked about with the annual all access pass is we show you how this becomes your natural way of being, that you condition yourself for success, not just for something that's temporary, not just for something that you want in a couple of weeks or through three months or whatever, so that it's your way of being. It becomes your lifestyle is really what we're talking about. So thank you, Kayla. I loved how you presented that and how you're really helping people understand, like if we look at this a little differently, like look at it as a daily investment, because that's really what it is. And you really do need to be doing this on a regular basis on a daily basis. So had to jump in there, Kay. Sorry about that. But I wanted to really speak to that because I saw the comments come in on the right hand side. <clears throat> oh, no, I'm, I'm so happy you did it. And it's exactly what Peggy said. It's exactly that it's an investment in yourself. And it's an investment that you're applying every single day. So yeah. well, I'll let uh, I'll let I'll give it back to Peggy and allow her to continue the presentation. Thank you Thanks so much. There is another way that we can help you. Actually, this is something we've just opened up. And it's an experience where you can come and stay here with me in the city of Ottawa. And we can invest some time together. And it's at my lake house, the new lake house that we've just taken possession of, where you will come here to Ottawa, you check into my lake house, and you stay there. You stay there, and we work together. And we're going to work on whatever it is that you want to work on, whether you want to work on your business, whether you want to work just on your own mindset, whether you want to write a book, whether you want to create a program, whether you want to establish multiple sources of income, whatever it is that you want to work on, 
This is, yeah, that's right, Jacqueline. She says, this is a lot less than a college degree. You're absolutely right about that. And what does it do for you? It can change your life. Now, how many of you would love to come and spend a few days with me at the lake in my lake house? Like check in right at my lake house. Yes, okay, good. Type in the chat box if you'd like to do it. Don't worry about the how much or what does it cost or when can I do it? Just the question is, do you want it? Do you want it? Okay, good, Tanya. All right, already done, she says. I like it, okay. We've got Monica, Patricia, Z Zara, Connie, Anne. Yes, absolutely. Tootie, I saw her hand raised there. Sladjan, uh, Neka. oh, I love it. Gardy, Jacqueline, perfect. Okay, Jay, Lucinda, Eileen, yes. I need to go. Oh yeah, Eileen's in Ottawa, that's right. Absolutely, you don't even have far to go, do you? And it's right on Mississippi Lake. Oh, Billionaire Pizza's best place to be. Don't miss it. <laughs> Pete's coming back for the, uh, we call it, we call it the author cabin. Now I'm an author, so we're just calling it the author cabin. But it is not only for authors. It's for anyone who has a desire to have that private attention where you want to work with me. Now, Roddy's going to put the link in there so you can find out more about that. Roddy, in fact, oh, there, he just did. Listen. Uh, do I know Roddy or do I know Roddy? He is the guy that's one step ahead. I am so blessed that I have attracted him into my life. So blessed because he helps me serve you and he does it magnificently. He deeply cares. He's extraordinary. Anyone that's dealt with Roddy, you know what I'm talking about. He's an amazing, incredible being. All right, Zara, I want to meet you too. Get a big hug and work. Okay, perfect. Now, Vladdy is here. Vladdy, who I'm blessed to attract into my life as well. She attracted me. I attracted her. And what a blessing she is. And Vladdy is somebody who's very happy to meet with you. In fact, Roddy's going to put a link in there and you can book a call with Vladdy. But let me just say this, please. I'm going to beg you. If you book a call with Vladdy, show up for the call. Okay. It, it's just, it's the thing that just surprises me. When people book a call and then they don't show up, she's taking time away from her family. She's dedicating herself for you for a one-on-one -on -one call that costs you nothing, nothing. And Vladdy knows these materials. She knows them very well. So she's happy to discuss with you what's the best option for you. What's the best solution for you? Because we've got different options. In fact, I want to ask Vladdy if you're willing, because Vladdy quite often is, and she always is willing to serve, of course, but Vladdy, tell me about when you were thinking about making positive changes in your life and you felt that discomfort with making a decision to do something you hadn't done before, but you went ahead anyway. So tell us a little bit about what that experience was like for you. It was really scary. And as anyone else, we have these big dreams and we have excuses. And I'm going to say it is you can always, you will always win and create success if you fail and grow and do it again and just get better. But if you're actually using excuses, you won't get where you want. And, and that will happen to me. I had lots of excuses, like I didn't have money. It wasn't the right time. When the kids grow up, then I will do that. And it's that if this happens, then I will do that. I mean, anyone relates to that? Conditioning. We actually make a decision from the place of the temporary condition. And please, anyone who is somewhere where you don't want to be, it's a temporary condition. And the only person who can change that is you. So for me, making a decision to actually step up of, of I was dissatisfied. And Peggy talks about this a lot, is dissatisfaction stimulates growth. So for me, it wasn't actually the desire that pulled me. It was the dissatisfaction that pushed me because I've made a decision no more. I can just get better. And I didn't believe in myself. And when Peggy talked about that, I borrowed her belief because I knew the materials work. See, I wasn't actually one of those who didn't believe in the materials. I knew they work, but I didn't think they will work for me. And I had excuses why they wouldn't. So can you make a decision from the place where you would absolutely love to be? Think from the end, like what if you knew that you joined today, because that will happen to me. What if you knew 
that if you actually join to them and you go through the year of the annual access pass and that they are they are the top programs and the top coaching and the top times we all give you and Peggy gives you it's it's the best offer you can have I'm, I'm trust me I'm telling you because I've been in all programs it's the best offer we've ever created well Peggy's created now what if you knew that in a year's time you're gonna have all these things would you do it of course but what we often say is we don't know. And every person like Peggy and all these amazing successful people, including you, because you already are successful in a way you were before and which you are now, but you can do better. You can be better and you can give more and be more and have more. But do you believe it? Maybe not, but borrow the belief because you can. And to make a decision from the place which is discomfort, that's where you actually create the new programming because what happens is it takes away the patterns. Are you maybe relating to things like, oh, towards the end of the month, you feel this discomfort because the payments are coming in. You actually become, it becomes your pattern. It's the same as I'm not confident enough. I can't speak in front of a public. I'm not the, you know, oh, I'm now the age. I mean, who am I to set up a business now? I'm 50 or 60. I mean, any of you might have that kind of talk. We always have excuses, but really recognize that because those are success killers. And I've made a decision. I, I went through a challenge of the health, which I know we're like talking about because I mean, that is past me, but really I said no. And when I said no to things and treatments, why? Because I created this convincing belief that I am healthy and I can do it. And I borrowed Peggy's belief and it wasn't easy. You know, like when you make this decision, it actually becomes harder because all of a sudden you feel all this fear coming up going, oh my God, like, can't do that. Like, I'll do it another time. But the biggest lesson I've learned is the decision-making. And it's if you actually believe that you're going to make a different decision in the next month, you have this fantasy of believing that you're going to be a different person than you are now. It has to start inside you. It's an inside job. So what is actually going to happen? Like, close your eyes, whatever you guys desire. I, I Peggy is really, there is a one secret. She's going to tell you what the secret is. But what I've learned, it's not about the money. It's not about the, the house, the attracting of everything. Because if you change the way you think and you learn, to patterns and apply them. You can have anything. It really doesn't matter. So focusing on, can I have more money this month? Yes, but then you're going to go, well, what if I can't have it the next month? Because once I manifested the yearly income in two months, I all of a sudden felt fear. What if it doesn't happen again? So just because you manifest something doesn't mean you stay there and you actually know how to do it. We will go back because the patterns pull you back going, okay, I did it. I am great. I have a new house. But you want to stay there. You actually want to come to the point where you're manifesting everything continuously. And that can only happen if you transform from within and you shift the way you think and you stay there because you come to challenges we all do. But what if the health comes again? Or what if something comes again? I actually experienced a couple of uh, uh, bumps with something that happened before. And I can promise you guys, I am a serious student, but it doesn't break me anymore. I'm like aligned completely. And that's the whole key. Because when the challenge comes, you can actually stay feeling, you know what? It's going, it's going to be totally fine. But it's different to say it and it's different to feel it. But when you're actually there, when you're feeling you, it's going to be fine because it's temporary and whatever lesson we're learning or going through, it's fine. But really, really change the way. Transform from within because every single one of you have a solution. So if we, if you knew that you get into this program, you get the result, would you do it? Yes, but that's not how the success is created. It actually tests us because we have to say yes to ourselves when we don't know. It's the faith. It's the knowing. And Peggy, I love what she said because I adopted her knowing, relaxed in the knowing right three years ago with the Bob. And when he said, write down your goal, I'm so happy and grateful now that... I actually, all my goals throughout my three years, um, I'm so happy, grateful, and relaxed in the knowing. Now that, that has been for three years, my statements and affirmations. But what is the knowing? 
it's invisible, guys. So whatever is the knowing, it's inside you. Do you know that you will be where you want to be? Maybe you don't believe it yet, but you absolutely can. And you can do it, but nobody can make a decision for you. Why? Because you don't connect, to, you don't sign with God, universe, whatever you believe. The higher power is there. You are signing your life on this. It's your goal. You are gifted and you can do anything. But if you don't believe it, just carry on with bringing it and really embedding it in you because it's a journey. And if you learn it in a journey, surround yourself with the great mentor, with someone who knows how it's done, and really with all of you inside of the, uh, the membership, you will have accountability. You will not get out of a truck. You will, but you will get back really faster. And that's the whole key. Just make a decision that you will do something for yourself today that will you will say thank you to yourself. I wouldn't be here if I didn't do it. And I definitely didn't do it from a place of comfort. I didn't have the money. I didn't have the health. I didn't have any of these. But because I'm going through it and applying it, I now know it's possible because unless you do it, you can't really say. So can you do it? Absolutely. Say yes to yourself because it's your life and it's ticking and you never know how much time you have. So that's the thing. Really say yes to yourself now and just leave behind yourself legacy and great life because you created. So good. Wow, Vladi, I'm inspired. <laughs> I love it. So good. We do. We transform from within. You're right. And as Vladi was speaking, I was thinking about a quote that I heard years ago that goes like this. We think in secret and it comes to pass. Environment is but our looking glass. And what does that mean? It means that when you look at your results, it's based on what's gone into your mind. Not that we're going to judge it, but we're simply aware of what's really going on. So we just got a couple of minutes left. Now, how many of you would love to know what the secret is to riches in your life? How many of you would love, love to know what it is? Let me see the, the chat box from those of you that are here. Yes. Okay. How, how many of you? Okay. We got two. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now it's right. I was thinking, okay, two of you? All right, good. All right. Everyone's, yeah, me. All right. Perfect. Perfect. How many of you feel I haven't covered it yet? It's already been covered. The secret to manifesting what you desire is number one, you decide and write this down, by the way, decide what you would love. What would you love? Remembering this, when you're deciding what you would love, you do not have to know how. You absolutely do not have to know how. This is great news, guys. You don't have to know how, but you decide what you would love. The second thing is you got to determine what would you need to believe and what would you feel? These two go hand in hand. What would you feel were you to already have it? And the third one is you go straight to feeling. You've got to be feeling it. And it must become your dominant, your dominant way of being. What did Vladi say? We transform within. We transform within by being connected energetically to those outcomes as if they're in our life now. Is it easy? Not necessarily. Can be challenging, but I'll tell you something. It becomes very easy. Now, when does it become very easy, Peggy? It comes very easy when you have the depth of understanding that you know how it works. And it becomes very easy when, when you start producing the results. Because as Vladi said, as Kayla said, as I have said, is it's repeatable. This is what we teach. We teach repeatable techniques to manifest your every desire, absolutely every desire. So um, my granddaughter has been popping in, showing herself. Can we see little Ari? I want everyone to meet my little three-year-old granddaughter. She'll be three actually in a matter of two weeks. Two weeks is her birthday. And Kayla said that the daycare was closed. So, so uh, Aria is home. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Aria. It's grandma. And, you know, I said to Kayla, I said, it's okay. I said, you know, Aria just brings joy to wherever she goes. And it's part of life, right? You know, we have our children, you know, we do things and everybody thinks everything's supposed to be perfect, right? And I think it's perfect that she's here. I think it's perfect that Aria is listening. And in fact, this is all going into Aria's mind. Aria is getting conditioned. Aria is getting programmed. And what is she getting programmed for? Success. Her brother, my grandson, James, when he comes in the car with, <laughs> when, James, when James gets in the car with me, I'm always playing my power life script. 
And at some point I asked James, I said, would you like to listen to something else? And he said, no, I want to listen to your Power Life script. And his father, which is Kayla's husband and Aria's dad and James' dad, you know, as a child, he got programmed with these materials all the time because every time Michelle was in my car, the tapes were playing or the audios were playing. Well, there were tapes back then and then they became CDs and then audios, et cetera. So you want to be programming your mind in a very positive and powerful way. So I want to thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you. It's absolutely an honor to serve you. Uh, would love to see all of you at the Lake House. We'll do it one at a time, of course. <laughs> and it is a first come, first serve basis. But you just ask yourself, do I want it? Don't worry about the money or what does it cost or how much is it or whatever. You just ask yourself, do I want it? And if you want it, you can manifest it. You can make it happen. Book a call with Vladdy because she can definitely get on a call with you. She's happy to meet with you to talk about it. There's ways that you can secure your spot by putting in a deposit. And I want to thank my team. I have the most incredible team of people that I'm so blessed to serve with. Kayla, thank you for presenting the annual All Access Pass. That's another phenomenal option for you. And uh, definitely take a look at that. Roddy's been putting the links in here. We'll have the replay up. You'll see the links on the replay page as well for the two offers and to meet with Vladdy as well. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. But you know how you can honor me is by following through. Tell me about your success. I want to be highlighting you on my next webinar. So it's always a pleasure to serve you. Thank you, Vladdy. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Roddy. And thank you, everyone, for being here. We love you. We appreciate you. And it's always a pleasure to serve. Thanks so much, everyone. There we go. Victory pose. Tootie's doing the victory pose. Do the victory pose, everyone. It feels good. You can feel victorious now. Just feel how amazing it feels. Feels good. Yay, Aria. <laughs> I love it. Yay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Maybe we can get a picture. Um, I'm going to take a picture of the victory pose. So let's get you guys doing that again. Get my camera, especially Aria. Aria, get the victory pose going again. There we go. All right, guys. And boom. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. See you again soon.